Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. We're doing MIG welding today, and I'm doing a little test, a little experiment on the effects of wire feed speed on penetration. Sometimes you want to lower wire feed speed for a handful of joints, and one particular one would be an outside corner joint. A lot of times you can get away with lower wire feed speed there. You don't want a big high crown profile on an outside corner always. You want it to lay down flat, and on 11 gauge, like I'm welding today, you definitely don't want to pump that wire in there and just have to fly and have that puddle chase you. So I lowered the wire feed speed on that and it seemed to work out pretty well. But then I wanted to see what would happen if I used a low, low wire feed speed on a T-joint versus a recommended wire feed speed. So I did it, I cut, I polished, I etched. We'll see the results in a little while. Let's get on with it. Today I'm using O30 diameter ER70S6 wire. And this is a little Lincoln Power MIG 210 MP. And this is the chart on the inside of the door. And we're going to follow it over here to eighth of an inch thick metal. That's 3.2 millimeters thick. And you can see the settings call out for 19 volts, 280 inches per minute with 030 diameter wire. So I'm going to go ahead and set it to those settings. 280, I'm using 7525 gas roughly 15 to 20 CFH, and I'm going to set my inductance on about 7. Not every machine even has an inductance setting, but when, when they do, I like to set mine a little above halfway as a general rule. Now again, this is an outside corner joint in 11 gauge material, and it, don't, it doesn't take nearly the amount of heat that a T-joint or a lap joint would because of the edges. Edges just don't conduct heat as well. So to set this thing as it calls for for 8th inch metal means that I am cooking along and really the puddle is almost chasing me and if, if I'm not careful, if I go a little bit slow, it, it just gets out of hand. It piles up and it gets, it's hard to see where I'm going actually. I'm trying to go so fast to not pile up. So the first one I did at 280 inches a minute. I guess it started off okay, but it got a little squirrely on me toward the end. I wasn't able to keep up the travel speed even like I should have. So I'm going to try one much lower wire feed speed. I, I never will with this lower wire feed speed. You can hear the sound of this, of this puddle just rattling. Like I said, I, when I hear that sound, I'm trained to you know crank up the wire feed speed but I'm trying to keep an open mind here I see a lot of welds posted here and there on forums and on Instagram where the the, the ripples are just like stacked like dimes and I'm thinking that looks like they use a lot lower wire feed speed than what I'm accustomed to so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing ex some experimenting here seeing how that works out and for an outside corner on on eighth inch thick metal actually dropping the wire feed speed may not be a bad idea Slowing that travel speed down helped with the penetration a lot. It just didn't seem right either way. The sound, the sound of that that uh, arc just didn't seem right to me. All right, we're going to do a T joint now with 180 inches a minute, but 20 volts. So still a lot lower wire feed speed than than is recommended. A lot lower than what I would use. And listening to it just putter along here, I, I definitely think it's not enough for a T-joint. Looks cold, doesn't it? It's weird how when I film arcs like this, looking from this angle, it look it looks a lot colder than it actually is, but this is this is not good. This low low wire feed speed doesn't give you any punch. There's no arc force. It's just not driving in there. It's just kind of puttering along. And while it was good on an outside corner for a T-joint, which takes a lot more heat, it's just, it's just not doing really well. Doesn't look good either. Let's crank it up now. I'm going to leave the voltage alone and go up to 280 inches a minute. And remember the settings call for 19 volts and 280 inches a minute. And a lot of times I'll raise the voltage a little or drop the wire feed speed down a little. The charts on welders seem to always be a little high on wire feed speed. Now this is much better. Much faster travel speed. It's, it's punching in a little bit better, like the sound a lot better. Just looks like it's penetrating more. Actually, less spatter too. A little bit different angle. This actually looks like I'm pushing it, but it's actually more like straight on 
90 degrees, just the camera's at a different angle. I'm getting ready to do a quick test on these T-joints. It's called a macro etch test. And basically you just cut and you sand with finer and finer grits. You get it down to a fairly smooth finish and the smoother the finish, the easier it etches. You can etch it with something as mild as Loctite rust remover. It's got phosphoric acid in it. it takes about 30 seconds to a minute to, to bring out the weld nugget, but this works. Now I've got in my, I've got some something a little stronger here that I got years ago. And it's a funny story. This is a, a passivation solution for stainless steel. I took this stuff on a plane back around 1990 or 91 before uh, you know inspections and security got so strict on airplanes. A booth at Fabtech was handing out six-pack samples of acid solutions like this and I took one, took it on the plane. They said, what is this? I said, it's just passivation solution for stainless steel. Ah, no problem. Hop on. No big deal. Crazy to think about that. Now this stuff, this stuff will etch really quickly but there's no need in, in, in the hazards. Just, just wait a few seconds, use the Loctite rust remover. I've also heard that concrete etching solution also will work uh, to etch carbon steel really well. So we're going to etch this in just a second and check for penetration. I've got a swag porta band stand here and I'm going to cut it right down the middle, put it in a little drill press type vise and start off with a 100 grit sanding disc here and then I'll go to a red Rolock type disc and that's really as fine as I'm going to go today. It helps if you go as fine as you can but this is fine enough to do what we want to do today. I've got a little Q-tip here, some of that passivation solution, and it brings out the, the weld profile. And if I've got a little flashlight on it here, that helps a lot to play a light from different angles. So you can see where I've got the arrow pointed there. That's the one with the low wire feed speed and a considerable amount of lack of fusion there. That straight line indicates lack of fusion. One on the left was 280 inches a minute and got a really good penetration profile. All right, well, that does it for this week. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. See you next time.